Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Chris Torrance over at Optum for another episode of Semi-Related. Uh, thanks for everyone who's tuned in thus far, and uh, we hope to keep it going. So appreciate everyone attending. Uh, today, we have a special guest. I think I like to think they're all special, but uh, it's rare in my time in this industry that I've heard a name mentioned as much as this, this gentleman, but I hadn't actually ever gotten to meet up until fairly recently at a conference. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's bring on and give it up for uh, Mr. Shannon Breen over at Cratevana. How you doing, Shannon? Hey, good, Chris. Thanks for having me, man. How's life treating you out there? You in Phoenix this week? Phoenix is beautiful this week. Yeah, yeah. But this is uh, this is why we have spring training. This is why uh, there's no hotel rooms. This is why everybody. I can't go see my cubbies there in Mesa. Is that the problem? There's just no uh, vacancy at the hotels. Tickets okay. are tough, but you could still get you know with with your kind of money that anybody can get it. Okay, <laughs> right. So I'll be, I'll be uh, in the, the cheap seats for sure, even at a preseason game. Seat, yeah, no, this is a cool time of year with baseball and everything going on out here. The weather's fantastic, and everybody's either using their second home or coming out and staying. So busy time in Phoenix. Awesome, awesome. Well, like I said, kind of before you we officially brought you on, it's uh, it was awesome getting to finally you know put a name and a face and shake a hand and uh, sit down and have a again as I think we called it, it's like a, a, a impromptu roundtable discussion at Manifest. So uh, yeah, one of the but, better conversations I had during the event, man. Yeah, and hey, not to gaslight, right? Not my style. I it was cool. You came up and introduced. You know, I know you knew Don, right? Don, yeah, CEO. yeah. Um, you and I had never met, never met Peter. Um, yeah. And then that led to that, that con and that's why I kind of share with people on conferences, right? I don't know your experiences and stuff, but it's like, I know everybody does like the speed dating, like, Oh, and I got 90 meetings. Right. I, if I look back on my decade or 12 years now in the business and I think about conferences, my best experiences are like the ones you and I shared. They're all organic. I, yeah. It, it, it had the run on a calendar. We had a combo. It was quick. It was like, what are you guys doing tomorrow? Let's eat lunch or let's meet up. Yeah. lunch. And then from there, it like ends up, I agree, like we walked away from that. One of my key takeaways was that conversation and just just the authenticity and the depth of it and the creativeness of it. And honestly, you walk away from that. And like, that's why you put yourself in that scenario to meet new people and stuff. It doesn't necessarily always have to be structured, but you got to yeah. be around. Like, it's almost like basketball, right? If you want to rebound, you got to be around the rim. Amen. Yeah. And, and, so, and so I feel like conferences have always been that. And then I also feel like, hopefully from a branding and the way we show up as a company, like there are people that know us that we've never met and, yeah. and probably for you the same. And that's kind of cool when people come up and share the love of like, I love what yes. you're doing. I love what your team's doing. Like keep it up because let's be honest, man, like this, this market in general, right? No matter where you live and, and interact with it in multiple industries, like this overall market's just been tough on folks. It so it's that like love and appreciation and, and have people that are like fans that you don't really know. I mean, it, it does boost you up a little bit as you work through this really challenging kind of economic time. Yeah. I mean, you, you nailed it. Like I said, I, I'm a fairly frequent conference score myself, obviously, and you are, you know, um, but yeah, I, I, I you know, we'll get into some other conversation, but I think it's, you know, it's conference season. I, I was talking to someone yesterday that, you know, what is, is it, is it a season anymore? Or is it just more of like non-conference season is Thanksgiving and the holidays, right? Yeah. And, yeah. But basically, and as you've already seen, we've already been to a few this year already, and I'm not maybe a little low in the summer, um, but man, it's just like, it's constant now. And I think that's good. I think it's a post COVID kind of like this, this eagerness to get back out there and, um, you know, meeting people like you, like, this is great, this virtual environment, but man, that, you know, just being able, like you said, to, to all the Shana, what's up and, and being able to kind of see some old faces that, you know, but also those people you may have interacted with on, you know, remotely and being able to finally see them and get to know them as people. Right. I think that's the other thing, you know, we're all people. And I think we all, you know, business and logistics, trans, et cetera, brings us together. But man, I, I think that's how in my career, most of my, you know, lasting relationships, I don't even know we talk about work as much anymore because it's just no. people have so much more depth, right? So um, some of my I, best I, friends well, I met early stage in conference, right? I had this really cool boss. Um, and I'll be honest with you, culturally at the place I was working, it wasn't really supportive of people going to conferences unless you were in the C-suite, right? It was a... yeah different type of culture. You had to uh, earn the right. I was, when you're, when you're younger, it's like, you know, you envision a day you may go to a conference and that's corporate, right? I mean, it, I get it, but it's, uh, yeah. The irony so I is when I talk to, when you talk to executives, they all laugh, they go, you know, we, we all know each other. We've been coming to this thing for 20, 30 years and they're there for, you know, again, there's, there's learnings, but how much are you going to teach somebody that's been in the game for this long? But for them, it's more of like getting to meet up with their peers and have a little social time, which I understand. But the irony is that the next generation, a lot of corporate, companies, they never realize maybe we should introduce the next generation to these events, right? So 
you know, then there's a well, chuckle. And, and, and why not? And why not, Chris? Right. So two yeah. things, in my opinion, right. And, and you, you, you kind of know my style from the multiple times we've hung out. Yeah. Two reasons why they don't. One, it's risky because yeah. what if that person, like, if that person's really good, we'll keep them. Hey, we don't want any, we don't want the world to know them. Or right. secondarily, yeah. we don't want them to see what the world could look like outside yeah. of these walls. You know, I've never heard it put that way, but you're right. I guess that's, uh, and if you think about it, especially in the down market, some of these conferences effectively act as like this pseudo career fair. Um, and, and just being in the startup game, like you have, you know, it's not uncommon for people to hop around a little bit from time to time. So the joke becomes like, Hey, it's so-and-so I know for a while, where are you at these days? And the only thing, you know, you know them, but their business cards changed. And I think that's probably a lot of that's due to the exposure of going to these events and, and being able to really check out what's there, finding people that you really, you know, you're interested in meeting, never know where those conversations go. So, but that's great points. I've never heard, you know, from a corporate, like this idea of we've got to keep our talent protected and we don't want to expose them to other, like other potential competitors. Like, which, no, is, which, is, which, is, which is this, the, the, and hey, that's the, that is culture, right? When people yeah. talk about culture, they want like certain things. To me, what we just walked through, that's corporate culture. Yeah, right? I like to think there's exceptions, but you and I both have had experience in that world. And I think more times than not, you nailed it. Just the, there's a different mentality entirely. And, you know, that's where my wife always says, Chris, are you going to go get a real job one day? You know, and I think she's probably insinuating I need to get into like a, another fortune type company. And I'm like, I just, I'm having so much fun and I love the autonomy and the latitude. So, hey, it's not for everybody. We can kind of touch on that, you know, startup life. That'll be a part of today's conversation, I think, is just, yeah. you know, people, I think people always assume the grass is greener. And so, as I often tell these younger folks, like, if you're used to having a manual and an SOP for everything, uh, that's how you operate. I was in the military. So, that's like the epitome of like, there is structure and chain of command, et cetera, right? Um, so, maybe it's not for you because your first day might be like, uh, I, you know, here, here, I got to, you know, we're busy. Uh, here's the hot seat, you know, we'll help you when we can, but we're building something, we're going fast. And some people thrive in that, but I've seen others that assume that's what they want and they get into it. And it's like, Hey, I've got, you got too many questions. They're not really a self-starter. It's like, I don't know that you made the right move. Um, I, I think, yeah. I think, and yeah, I think you, it's funny you mentioned that. Right. And then there's this like weird inflection point where you've accomplished certain things, but to your point, it's far from perfect. Yeah. And then you get a large group of people being like, well, this is broken. That's broken. This is broken. I've had people be like, well, I'm just flagging it for you. I'm like, hey, it's all broke. <laughs> right? Like, like and, and hey, I don't need flags. I need yeah. solution engineers. Yeah. I need you right. to flag, but then tell me how you're, what are you doing or what do you think specifically? And this is where people struggle. Chris. Right. And I don't know your career. I'd love to know your feedback. Everybody can be a flag man or woman. Yeah, plenty this of problems. Is wrong and that's broke. <laughs> this is broken and this is improved. And then you sit down and you say, cool, write me a solution, how you do it, how you'd run it through. Oh, no, I was just flagging it for you. No. Oh, <laughs> no. thank you. Because like, 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 I have nothing better to do. I, I, yeah, yeah and I understand, <laughs> I realize, but like, wouldn't it be better yeah. if you had a proposed solution? Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of times that ends up falling like in my, in, in, in these walls, like back on me and your org, maybe back on you. And you find right. this weird scenario where you're like, I'm looking for the people that can flag and solve. And, and then to Absolutely. your point, some people are comfortable with that. Some people just want to let you know what's broken. And I think that's just nature. I think it's humans. Um, and you see it really quickly in an org of like that dichotomy between the flaggers and then like, yeah the doers. And then it's this weird thing in the middle where I don't think either group sees each other. Right. And so yeah. I think that's naturally what I've experienced my entire career. Uh, certainly not uh, immune to that in current state. Uh, and you know, where I sit, it's uh, frustrating, but it's exciting. And like, I always, we use this line around, you know, at least I use it with a lot of folks use it this morning, right? Like progress over perfection. Yeah. Makes sense. Progress over perfection, right? It's just that is that is the life if you want to build. You yeah, and I see the and I yeah. see the uh, when I interview people, I sometimes ask, you know, what 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 are you? Uh, this is startup land, right? So just are you aware of it? And I think one of the things I look for is people that they are very adamant that they have great ideas, but they they're in the corporate bureaucracy where every idea has to go through a black hole ticket queue and get approved and approved and approved. 
and nothing gets done. And I think the, when I see that hunger and that grit of, I want to make a difference, I just need someone to give me a little latitude. And I go, it's going to be more than a little. It, it's to your earlier point. We know the problems. Glad you do too. Why don't you like, this is, there, there's no bureaucracy. There's no judgment free zone. If you have a good idea, whether you've been at the company for 12 years or two months, I believe in that going back to my an Uber thing, like you said earlier about, you know, progress over perfection, it's meritocracy over hierarchy. So I think those are the kind of people that want to like, you know, be a, be an owner, not a renter. And again, going back to the Uber years of, of some of the, the, the principles there, but I think a lot of those have really stuck with me and kind of coming full circle. It goes back to why I would be very frustrated to go into another really corporate bureaucracy environment right now and be back in that uh, very, you know, everything so maybe perhaps overly structured and maybe there's good reason for that. And if you and I are ever at, you know, blue chip fortune, 500 companies, maybe we'll have a different perspective and, you know, I don't want to jump the gun there, but uh, yeah, bring me yeah. with you. That's cool. Having fun for now. Yeah. Well, Shane, and kind of like, you know, we going back, man, rewinding the clock a bit, uh, very, very common question, man. But, you know, I, you know, we're, we're not spring chickens anymore in this industry. Right. No. So, you know, I go back to, I, I, I've told a lot of people how I kind of have hazard landed in this space, but you know, you've got a pretty impressive career yourself, man. So are you, you go back to high school, you're kind of finishing up. I think, you know, you, you stayed at school there in the Phoenix area. Yeah, from what yeah I it, was ASU. it was a sun yeah. devil here. Had a, you no, know, no parties, uh, right? ASU, I've, I've heard there's pretty quiet. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I like to date yeah. myself and it's like, it's called, <laughs> the business school has a name. It's like WP Carey. It wasn't even named that when I went there. You talk about being a spring chicken yeah. on the floor the other day, right? And uh, this kid's got this amazing head of hair, which I'm highly jealous of. Oh, come of, on right? now. I, I, yeah. I set the yeah. bar really low. You're, you're looking good, good, by the way. You're looking real oh, good. Oh, man. I, you know, <laughs> it's whatever. This kid's got, like, lettuce, you know what I mean? Like, just flowing yeah, out the back the of his yeah, yeah. trucker hat. I'm like, oh. I can't remember where we got it. And then I was like, hey, he's like, oh, look at him. Oh, this is how it is. He said, let me, let me, hey. Oh, you should see my driver's license if you want to see real head of lettuce. So he hands me his driver's license, right? Look at his hair for one second. And then, and then I get fixated on his birth date, which is <laughs> after when I graduated in high school, Chris, right? So you talk about spring chicken and I just stop. Yeah. I'm like, that's not a typo, huh? You, you're born in 99, huh? And he's like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah, that's so happening. your definition of pop so culture happening. might have different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're graduating high school. I graduated high school. He's not born yet. Now he works here at Freight Vana. It's like, dude, this is it's happening at a rapid pace in my life, for sure. So you're at Arizona State, right? You made that move, right? And mm -hmm. go through that best best of times, right? I, at least for me, it was in, in a lot of regards. Um, how does trucking and logistics and all that, is this, is this ranked completely random? Give us a little, yeah, you may have heard this before, but I always like to ask, like, what, yeah. give, give some detail. Uh, I was, I was working in like, there was one point in time in like my twenties, I had a real estate career, a, a, yeah. a marginal one, right? So I was like a hobby real estate. Um, I was bartending at night, two or three, four days a week, right? In downtown Tempe. Yeah. Um, and then I had like a entrepreneur, like a, 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 a company with a buddy of mine, like servicing, like commercial real estate and that mm -hmm. sector as well. So I was like slightly an entrepreneur, also an entrepreneur in real estate and bartending and right, just doing the jack of all trades, uh, did that for a while. And honestly, like, I wish I would have gone deeper in one or the other, uh, yeah. 2008 happened, right. The world fell out. The business fell apart because it was ancillary and tied right to real estate. So real estate fell apart. Plus the oh, commercial God. real estate deal fell apart. Yeah. Um, did a couple other things and then I had an opportunity to work for I, my, my background's finance. So I, yeah. I ended up getting an opportunity through a, a really, you know, close friend that gave me an opportunity as an FPA, FPNA, right. He was mm -hmm. working for a, uh, an equity group and gave me an opportunity here in Phoenix. So I did that for two or three years. Kind of was really using my finance degree, but that, that I, it's like you find those jobs that you can do, but maybe that aren't built exactly for you. Right. Yeah. Um, not, not enough personal engagement, no real team leadership. And I just felt this void, like, okay, the paychecks are good. It's not incredibly demanding nights and weekends, but I am like, I am bored. Yeah. And they honestly were at a point too, where they call them the one day they, they call me, Chris, and they say like, Hey, we need a forensic accountant. And you couldn't have said anything. Like it was, it was, it's a blessing, right? I could call one of the guys and I haven't talked to him in years, but like I'd call him and be like, Hey, that was the best blessing. Cause then I end up calling. So you want to know the transition to transportation? Well, a good buddy of mine I went to high school with had, had joined night transportation right out of college. Mm -hmm. um, 2020, oh, 2000, yeah, 2002. 
that's when we graduated. He would started, worked his way up, back offices and that. Well, now we're 10 years after that, right? He just joined the yeah. company on like a news clipping. Well, uh, that kid is now, as of two weeks ago, the CEO of Night Swift. Wow. I've heard okay. of that. They have yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. And, and obviously that's where I work. But, you know, so he had just become, honestly, we hadn't even done the merger with Swift, none of this stuff. Yeah. And uh, him and I had talked. He got me interviews, um, met the folks, really loved the opportunity to learn and, and started just from the ground, not the ground up, but I mean, booking loads and yeah, the customer awesome. knew nothing about yeah. logistics, knew nothing about the terminology, like everybody when they join, right? But right. I just love the pace and the people and I love yeah. the chaos. And I, yeah. I kind of was hooked. So in 2000, uh, summer of 2012, I joined, worked my way up through the ranks, uh, worked on tech systems. We did the merger with Swift, had opportunities there, intermodal, um, did all the things and learned so much in 10 years there. And then, and then honestly decided with, with John to, to step out and create yeah. uh, the brand Freight Bonnet from scratch and, uh, you know, still working on that history, uh, yeah. and story. But to your point, living kind of, I always say like on the Sahara, right? Where you don't know where your next meal is going to come. I mean, honestly, it suits me being an underdog suits me. Yeah. Um, I never really, while I was super productive, I always felt like I was like the go against the grain person. And at mm -hmm. some point, right, I had a mentor and you just kind of, that honestly wears on you at times and you wonder what that looks like long scale. And I had a mentor that was basically like, Hey, either you're going to figure out how to change the thing or it's going to change you over time. And well said, yeah, that month, some, some personal stuff. I was like, Hey man, why don't, why don't I go chase this dream? And so, uh, left in 2021 and middle of 21 kind of brought together the team and we've been doing our thing here for not quite three years yet. So, yeah, man. So I love the, uh, you know, my, I have a fairly non-traditional background and kind of won't go into it, but not, not too dissimilar from some of your path and, you know, I think whether you're in the real estate game, bartending, right? We have one of my best guy uh, in terms, uh, you know, one of the best guys I've ever worked with to do demos was also, you know, he's got like an MBA PhD guy that went to serve drinks at uh, the Ritz Carlton for a few years. And man, it shows, right? He's so personable. And I think that's as a guy that's doing technical sales and demos, we, you know, it's sometimes it's try, you try to stay awake. Uh, right. He has such a great finesse and a great blending of the art and science and knowing people and reading a room and, I got to imagine that's benefited you just things that you may in the, in retrospect, you go, maybe, you know, at the time it's having, you know, I'm serving the night, I'm in the nightlife, serving drinks, doing big deals in real estate. Uh, and you look at where you are now and you kind of, for me anyway, I kind of look back and it was, that was all kind of fade or by design because it certainly equipped me with some skills that have nothing to do with like learning to business in the industry. Just those soft personal skills that I think as you ascend into leadership, as you clearly know, right. Those are those are things that I now look back and say, like, I'm so glad I got that exposure and that experience. Not saying I, it was the long term path, but, you know, it, it definitely has equipped me. And I can tell already with you, man, it's, it's I, I don't I, this, you know, all my Arizona State alum and, and, and surely the presidents and the, re the recruiting teams there are going to hate this next statement. But I often tell people that I learn more in that five, six years behind the bar than I can ever remember in college. Yeah. And that's just truth, man. That's just truth yeah. because look, college you're doing the thing, like every kid got these math things. I don't even know if I use that math anymore. <laughs> like it's just weird stuff, right? Like business management classes, you know what the best bit, you know what I mean? And so I'll have folks walk through this door. I'll talk to young kids and they'll come in and you'll, you'll love this, Chris. They'll be like, you yeah, know, so what's your experience? Right. And, and you see their like head and their eyes go down, right? Little bit of shame. Yeah. Right. A little bit of shame. Like, well, I, I, you know, I work in hospitality or I, I work in the oh, restaurant. Yeah. I, I look in the, I, you know, I just, I, I, I bust tables and I'm like, Hey, stop right there. Like, and I tell them my story and I tell them like, wear that with honor. Cause you are getting real life experience. And especially I would say this, Chris, and, and now we're going to really date ourselves. Amazing experience. But what has vastly even changed since you and I were young lads in our early 20s? Those cell phones that everybody's yeah. so enamored with, people, if you thought the skill was hard back then, <laughs> if you thought the skill was valuable back then, like yeah. that's age like Netflix stock, right? Like today, today, the ability to do that's like, oh my God, like 20, 15 years ago, but today this is worth ridiculous. 
all I engage with is these short clip it. Like everything is my, yeah. my phone. I can't, I don't even know how to look up. And I spent six years to your point, reading rooms, multitasking, yeah. angry guys. You've seen it all, Happy right? old lady, yeah. right? Like you've seen it all. But it's not that different than what we deal with now. And I mean, I wear, I'm in a sales environment quite a bit, man. And it's right. just the parallels, right? Because if you can't, if people are going to be picky, it's typically at the most granular level, food and drinks. That's the one. And you know that from restaurant and bar business, right? So if you can appease people when they're that, you know, that demanding, it kind of like, again, that skill will absolutely yeah. come into play in the best of ways when you're, even if you're selling enterprise software, right? It's like, you, at the end of the day, people are still people. You and I, I, I love that because I try to, it's hard to explain to the next generation that we just, there was no swipe ref, swipe right. You know, I, and when you see a younger folks now, and I don't want to generalize, but sometimes it's just like, hey, we could be having a discussion, but we could also go on just text and send chats and messages. And I'm like, we have somehow gotten so far away from that that I agree with what you said. If that skill was important then, now it's such a differentiating like attribute because there's not as many people that can just get out there and have that confidence and those experiences that have taught us how to engage yeah. with people of different backgrounds and different personality types. So I'm with you, man. I, I, I'm Problem. valuable. Angry people, problem yeah. resolution, because <laughs> you're in it, right? You can't just hang up the phone. It's not just, no, let me don't hide. Line. Like you got, you're sitting there. You know yeah. what it is. You're taking it and like, uh, yeah, our, my, you know, one of my most special people here, Andrew Zazimovich, right? Same yep. thing. Restaurant background. And we've always kind of shared that bond. And he's, he's uh, undoubtedly my, my number two. And I, you know, he's a lot younger than me. But like, I see where he's at in his career. And a lot of that, we talk about it. Like that restaurant thing. Not only do you appreciate what you have when you have the salad job and the opportunity to yeah. connect with people and your career is different. But it's all the things that you and I just talked about. And, and honestly, he's, he's a special, special guy too. And yeah, it's. I, I covet it. I look for it. So when they put their, like, I'm like, when people send resumes, like, Hey, this is the guy. And I was having like run through. I don't get a chance to see everything. But when I see it, I'm like, I like that. Ask him about that. Ask him yeah. what he learned. Ask him what he loved. Like, I want to know his or her take on this experience so much. Like, I just geek out over wanting to know if there's other people out there. And that's the, you know, we're in a business that, you know, and again, I, I, I applaud those that had much more intelligence or discipline than me to get into the Ivy leagues and, you know, go to these fancy schools and become consultants or whatever, like all due respect. But I do think in this trucking business and logistics, right, most of it's, it's very blue collar at its root and requires a different skill set that you had. You have to have exposure to various walks of life. Right. So, again, I'm, I'm a big uh, believer in that for this industry. I'm honestly if I'm looking between the Ivy League grad that's got all these internships at fancy places and seeing that kid like you just mentioned, you know, the. I, I'm a hustler. I had to figure it out. You know, I, I have street smarts. Uh, I didn't have the financial opportunities to really take a path that some of the other folks have. And I fall in that bucket. And yeah. like, to me, that's the ones that I, I honestly gravitate towards more probably, despite it's not about a resume, right? It's more about just me sitting with them and really getting to the core of what drives them, what, what fuels and motivates them and understanding their past and how that can equate to like some of the roles that I look to fill. And like, I think that I think you're going to fit just fine. Yeah. Don't worry about the well, rest. And you put us both walk in a really weird line because we got some pretty, you know, important people in both of our orgs that, that are on that Ivy league train. So when this goes oh, live, like I, I yeah. expect us to get internal hate mail. That's um, fine. From, I, from, I, hey, look, I'm, I'm the guy they, I, I have, if I offer any skill to most companies, it's, I'm just, I know just enough, like my brain's just good enough to be able to interpret some of the technical jargon. But more importantly, I think guys like us can, we're real people, we're authentic, we're logical, uh, we have empathy, right? We can go in and kind of translate some of the technical, especially in the worlds we live in, and be able to kind of engage with any audience, right? And at some point, if it gets too deep, Shannon, I'm the first guy to be like, time to bring in the smart people, right? And so I'm okay with that, though. I know my role, right? So um, yeah. yeah, well, let's go back, kind of getting back to Freight Vana, right? Yeah. Um, so you had this mentor kind of giving you, not an ultimatum, but just food for thought. Uh, yeah. And you decide, hey, you know, based on a couple you know, personal life, where things are going after the merger, you're getting the itch and maybe others. Right. Uh, and you said, yeah. hey, give me that day when I don't know if it's I don't I don't know the whole backstory. Give me the day where you're sitting around over beers or maybe it's a rough day at the office or whatever that looks like. And you and a few other guys are like, hey, well, why not us? And then you start to go, well, what then what do we do? What What's the game plan? You got to start somewhere. And that's that entrepreneurial spirit coming in. But it's more than just a vision, right? You got to start to figure out how are we going to like bring this to fruition? So 
How did, yeah. what was that day like, man? Do you remember it? Yeah, I think the, the aha moment was, yeah, I do. I mean, it was a, more of a personal deal. Like Adam and I are having a discussion. This is right before COVID hits, probably yeah. February of 2020. Um, and I remember it just thinking, man, if that's not valuable, then I don't know how I'm going to create value. Right. Yeah. If this is, if this is, this is what it feels like. If this is where the effort pays off, if this is the rack and stack, if this is hey, fall in line, Hey, this person, because they've been here 20 years. And I'm like, Politics. I just don't, op <laughs> yeah. I don't operate. Right. Yeah. And I remember just leaving that and then just not being very personally satisfied, despite, you know, what most people from the outside would be like, Oh, you should be way satisfied. Like you, you got the salary yeah. and you've got the role and you've got the comp. And I'm like, just satisfied. Right. Um, yeah. So I remember having that kind of thought and then, and then COVID hits. Right. And I think then the whole world changed because like all the pieces that I love, so I'm dissatisfied in the overall structure, but I love what I do, but then COVID hits and we all just go work in at our homes or in random offices and you miss yeah. like that connection. And then it just was like, oh, I don't love this either. Right. right. And then there's just a lot of time and I got more time because of commuting and this and that with my kids. And I just realized yeah. some of the stuff I was missing. And then I just had that moment where I was like, what if, what if it did look different? Right. And so started having discussions and thinking about that and wanted to put a plan together and test out the thoughts and theories and got a lot of decent feedback. And so then in January, you know, without much structure or plan in place, decided to uh, take the leap and take the leap and, and take start. The leap. Yeah, take the leap and start creating the plan and, you know, raise some dollars and hire a great yeah. team and platform. Yeah. And then and then just honestly, no customers, no revenue, no TMS on day one. And then just a one square one. Right. Yeah. Make, make the jump. I'd seen so many really good people I know and respect after my uh, at that point, uh, 10, 10 years in the industry. Right. That I was like, man, I feel like I feel like with the right team, I feel like the right vision. I feel like the right marketing. Mm -hmm. I feel like with the right presentation, right? What I could bring. Cause I didn't really do sales in a prior life. Mm -hmm. That's the other well, thing. You like, did, you just didn't know it. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> but now it's like, you know, you get thrust into, you want to grow a company. You, you are now truly selling right. Uh, yes. Externally. And so that was an, and, and it's just the challenges and skill sets that we learned. So just been like a moth to the flame of uh, going back to our initial commentary far from perfection, but we've right. made a lot of progress yes. and, and I'm proud at like where me and the team have come in such a short time. Yeah. Uh, outsiders, when I share the story, right. I think I shared with, with you and stuff and they, and they get some of the background. They're like, that's amazing. I, I don't thrive. I've shared this on a couple of conversations. I don't thrive off like positive energy. So I'm kind of screwed up. <laughs> so like for me, I don't take that. I do like to hear it because obviously as you're going through it, it, it just is always tough and there's yeah. you always feel like you're drowning. And so people give a lot of positivity, like I mentioned. And so there, there is a little bit of a boost to that. Um, but yeah, I'm just really proud about where we're at and what the potential yeah. looks like for us. Especially and I commend you for taking that leap, Shannon. I do. I yeah. think it's uh, I've over the course of my career, it's like, why not me? sit around with some old guys like us and over a beer, right? Chicago will just say like, Hey, if they can do it and he can do it. Why can't we do it? And I think it's always there, but we just realize we have, we're all dads and you know, we got sports and you know, diff no different than oh. your, probably your life. Right. It's just, so again, I always give an extra level of like just cred to people that are like, I'm going to do it and I'm going to just follow through and can kudos to you for making that happen. Um, when we talk about freight Vana, right. Kind of, so you, you got a lot of exposure at your time at night. Um, you're, you're sitting there probably on a daily basis, at least I did in my operation days, right? Like there's a better way or you start to see a trend emerge. And I mm -hmm. think that maybe leads into this idea of kind of going back to Freyvana, this, you know, this idea of power only yeah. trailer pool networks. Can you like, give us, give us a little bit more about how that vision kind of came in. Cause you got to, you, you launch Freyvana. It's like, great. What is our differentiating like approach? What, are, what, what's different, right? So can you give a little color on like that yeah. idea and how it came to fruition? You know, truth be told, go back to like 15, 16, saw the trend emerging at night. Yeah. Now, this is before the Swift merger, right? That happened in 17. Um, remember distinctly having a conversation with now the ex-CEO uh, at night about trailer pools and this. Now, mm -hmm. for anybody that knows trucking, that knows night, that knows the operation, like, you know, renowned, especially historically, for being wildly profitable, um, uh, wildly efficient. Well, part of that efficiency is not having extra anything. Right. 
right? right? And so that's how you get those results. There's a lot of other reasons, but that's a key component of how you get those types of results in a, you know, Kevin Knight led organization. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Hey, I'm watching my peers do certain things, right? I'm watching the other large companies. I'm watching, uh, ICS and, and Shelly, right? Yeah. I'm watching, yeah. uh, my friends at Schneider and, and they're yeah. doing it. And I'm like, Hey, we got to do it. Right. And it's like, not yet. And right. I don't think we have what we need. So it was kind of this like, not no, but like we got other things and I don't hurry up and wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hurry up, whatever. And so kind of like ice is it right. We do, I mean, hobby at it, not even close. And then, so we do the merger with Swift. Well, the, the issue or not the issue, I'd say really more the opportunity at Swift was, mm -hmm. you know, the fleet had been contracting to a size mm -hmm. from, you know, the, the Megalodon uh, of Jerry's, Jerry's, yeah. you know, Moises like full yeah. exposure, still massive. But mm -hmm. as, as the fleet had done some shrinking, albeit still the largest over the road trucking fleet, you know, uh, yeah. in credit to them. But what they end up having through all the mergers and all the stuff is this abundance of extra equipment. So after digesting the merger, getting through some stuff, I remember flying home distinctly from a conference, having some free time, some creative time and being like, now's the time. And so I put together a full like presentation deck uh, for Adam. And I said, now we got to go. I got to build a team. We got to do this. And he was fully supportive. And so we leaned into that, um, built the team, got the buy-in from the external org, had yeah. the additional equipment. So no one could really like contemplate like, well, it doesn't work. It's like, let me, let us, let us do it. Yeah. Um, and then, so just started to get that muscle memory built up and, and you know, all, like anything that you build, right. Highlights, low lights, um, pain points, learnings, but yes. like, what an environment to learn in because like, let's be honest, like you got a billion dollars in free cash sitting behind you. <laughs> Your company's making half a billion dollars a year. It does show as a growth engine, you're, you're sweating and utilizing equipment that was essentially underserved. Like it's, it checked so many boxes. Like it was, and then Adam in credit, as well as some of the other leaders in that org alongside me, we're, we're, we're wildly positive and supportive. Yeah. So got a chance to really do that. And so when we thought about, when I thought about, we thought about doing Freyvon, it was like, okay, we learned a lot, but like, what doesn't work? Right. Yeah. Even inside the infrastructure of the largest, right. like what worked, what didn't work. And right. Like so many business plans or business people that you've met, they have some nascent experience. And then it's like, what could we do better? Mm -hmm. What are the advantages, disadvantages? And so I just was like obsessed about figuring out like, well, what if we built this from scratch and we wouldn't have these benefits, but we'd have these benefits and like, and then really emerged as one of our, our core offerings. Um, in addition to some tech stuff that we offer, uh, to our partners. And, and honestly answers a lot of problems uh, in, yeah. the, in the industry and this really interesting segmentation. Um, a lot of people want to do it for like the marketing and sales aspects. You're, you're a sales guy. You get it. I totally get it. What they don't yeah. understand is the operational aspects yes. uh, and the fundamental aspects. And, and I talk to people about it. It's like, hey, I hear you, but you may not fully understand what you're getting into. You know what I mean? It's um, that, it's that to... idea of, is it feasible, right? And I think that I always, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that I was an operator for most of my career. And even now when I go with people I've worked with for the years in a more of a go-to-market capacity, right? They go, Chris, I don't care what you're, you know, maybe selling or whatever, but you're an operator. You, you're, you're one of us, right? And I take that as a compliment. And anyone who's in our industry, uh, you know, not to diverge too much, but that experience of being able to really sit in an operator role for many years, over a decade, it got me to, you know, I asked the same questions you did. Like, here's what's working, but I also see some things that aren't. And again, going back to the corporate world, I was like, I just don't know what, it, what, is the, what, what are the chances this gets really addressed anytime soon. But I, you know, my, my recommendation kind of bigger picture is these, you know, people, anybody that's going to go into a commercial or sales type role, having some understanding of how the business actually works, this industry, right? People, a lot of tech and as guilty of like, you know, we hear the same thing, right? It's fragmented and it's so siloed and archaic. Yeah, there's some truth in that. But these are the same founders that I always say, have you ever seen the back of a 53, 102 wide band? You know, and they're like, what? And I'm like, that's a good place to start because you're just being, you're being theoretical or just based on aggregate type of, you know, whatever you scraped off the web and ride that bandwagon. So, you know, one of the things you mentioned, Shannon, it kind of ties into this a little bit. When we were, we were at Manifest, you said, you know, I, this is the one thing that really stuck with me. You're like, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You're like, I met Knight, biggest carrier out there, had all access to this, this, this equipment, right? And some of it's underutilized. 
So you're sitting there like, oh man, I've got, this is, this is a gold mine, right? But you ran into some challenges of being able to probably influence the right people to really follow through and make it a priority. Transition to Freight Vana, you got the idea, right? You're like, this is it. This is such a big, you know, merging, very going to be, could be the future of the industry as far as I know, right? Like this could be the next big thing of how trucking and logistics works at scale. But you don't, you know, you're at square one again, like you said earlier. So all those thousands and thousands of trucks and power units, trailers, like you don't have that anymore. So it's just, I always kind of say that's a good point because that's the trade-offs when you go from really established, you know, successful companies to running with an idea and starting from like, well, great. I got it. Now I've got a, I've got a half of the equation solved, but I left the other half back in the corporate world. So, you know, is that still something that kind of you think about today of like, Oh, always. Yeah. And you just, you're taking your lumps and you're constantly trying to close that gap to the advantage advantages that you knew you had. That yeah. just takes time, that takes scale, that takes creativity. We've, we've bridged some gaps rather quickly. Some gaps, they may not come for years from now for us. That's right. Um, well, talk and, about that. What, what do you, Shana, what is, what in your time, the, the three years or so since you've launched Freight Fauna, what, what, what can you, you know, what has been kind of this, what would you, what would you take away as like, hey, this is, this is some great success we've had. Of course, there's another side of that coin we'll, we'll talk about. But yeah. based on like, what are you proudest of? What are some accomplishments? And I'm not looking for a laundry list, but, you know, what, what makes you proud when you go home every day, even after the rough day and go like, I'm still in it and I believe in this vision and this mission yeah. and we're going to do it. Yeah, we've quadrupled our team, right, since we yeah. started. We've, we've yeah. grown a company. Uh, this, this point next year, I, I, I certifiably think we'll be in the, you know, uh, runnings for being one of the top 100 in the awesome. entire industry. Uh, we will awesome. have done that, Chris, in the face of a uh, freight recession. Absolutely. In the face of, right. And, yeah. and had done it in a way where it was strategic mm-hmm. and metered not over our skis. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why, you know, people are really interested in what we're doing and how we're accomplishing that. Um, also, I'd say internally, right. You got to manage all that equipment. You've got to have, different things that you're considering and looking at in the future. You've got, you know, all the creativity that takes you outside the realm of traditional, but we already had some experience, right? Yeah. You still got to build on that without the advantages that we talked about. So for me, it's just the the growth in the face of the other part I'd say is, is creating a culture where if you watch and follow our brand, like powerful brand, by the way. Yeah. like two things I'd say that, that stick out to me that I'm really proud of that people weren't empowered to do in the last life. One, able to have like their own personal brand that then supports it and a company that supports that individuality yeah. that then can tie back. I think I give a lot of credit to, to Josh on our team, who, who's our director in that space of like kind of creating this idea in a a la like bar stool type mentality mm-hmm. where, hey, you can have a lot of different personalities, ultimately all still work for bar stool or, or whatever. <laughs> But it's really healthy to have like different perspectives and allow your people that. And that was kind of his yeah. mindset that he did. And I, I, we fully support it as an institution. Um, and then I, the last part I'd say is like trailers, right? When I think about trailers and why I'm so proud is like, there's a couple people that like promote trailers, but trailers are like a throwaway. You want to talk about transportation being commoditized. No <laughs> one gives two craps about a trailer, right? Yeah. But I think hopefully the way we've shown up, the authenticity, the passion, the fun, the humility that we've brought, we get so much love on social via that for people being like, right, we've got our uh, in the wild, right? Mm -hmm. That's the in the wild, in the wild. And we just get something every single week. I saw your trailer. Yeah. And when I think about branding and I think about spirit, like, Think about that. How many trailers don't mean a damn thing to anybody? But right. now, because of what we've shown up, how we show up for people, hopefully how we build this business, you've got people that are like happy to see one because when they see it, it becomes this connection back to a, hopefully a group of people that they are rooting for. They matter, um, right? It's pride. And I yeah. think that that yeah. is like this. I've never seen it. I'm on social. You're on so Like, I've never seen anything quite like that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a really special thing that we've done and it connects us to what we're building, what we're about, the community aspect. And so that for me, um, I hold in high, high regard for what we're building and hopefully the type of like professionals and how we support the industry um, in, in, in all of the things that we do. 
Awesome, man. Love to hear it. Well, when you talk in trailers, right? I mean, you're right. There's probably not a left pride put in. You go down the road, right? You can see those that actually seem to care about trailers some more than others, right? And not going to go down that for itty, 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 that, that rabbit hole. But when you talk about the future, whether it's 2024, Freightvana, maybe 25, six, you know, whatever that year looks like, I, I think we share a, a, a common vision of, you know, and it goes back to some of the pundits that'll say it's inefficient, all that. And there's truth, right? So, is the future, does the future look more like these models that the big boys are starting to test out saying, hey, when we look at, you know, we look at from modal breakdown, right? We have certain modes where if you're in rail or air or anything, like a few players dominate. But I think at last I saw, right, even the biggest asset players out there in, in tr trucking, right? It's still a pretty small, like 2% of the overall market, meaning there's so much opportunity. There's a huge cost, the CapEx to own and maintain trailers. And then, of course, market fluctuations, Right. I don't I, I, I fear for anybody that just got caught up in the hype of the past few years and said this cash is coming in left and right. Let's go get more equipment and didn't have the crystal ball to realize you may need that capital reserve for a rainy day or much longer than a day. Right. As we've noticed. Yeah. But do you, I look at the opportunity is how do we become does a future the future movement of freight and shipments, loads, et cetera. Is that do you think that's just more of a this massive power only where you, you envision a day where. It's no longer live load and unload, maybe with some exceptions, but it's more of like drop and hook networks, these trailer pools that are being shared amongst whether it's shippers or, or fellow carrier consortiums or whatever. And just to me, and again, maybe I'm just, I'm oversimplifying it, but to me, that just makes sense on a lot of levels. I know there's a lot I don't understand probably because I'm not yeah. owning a trucking company, but I, I'm with you, man. I just, I get passionate about that opportunity at, in play. And yeah. I, if the biggest players in the industry are pursuing that, I think that gives it merit and validity that there's something there. Yeah, so you, see what do you see? Is, see how do we get there, Shannon? How do we get there? Uh, I think companies like us have to go out and yeah. prove it, right? I think there, right. there's uh, there's an interesting line between the leading edge and the bleeding edge, Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but someone's got to be on the edge. Someone's got to do it, right? Yeah. And, and but the first mover advantage could prove to be the jackpot too. You just... Yeah, it's all part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there is some of that. So I think I think there's that, right? I think there's there's being uh, the first mover, one of the people from a like a pure play perspective yeah. in the category. Um, certainly a lot of risk, certainly a lot of pain, certainly mm -hmm. a lot of doubt uh, as you as you you traverse uh, those those stormy seas. But I think that's why it was so critical to have an experienced team that wasn't yeah. shaken by the shaken by the wave, so to speak, right? Like yeah. they're, they're built for like, okay, well, hey, we know what we signed up for. Like when I yeah. we went and hired seasoned pros in multiple facets of our business, it's because like, hey, you know what you're signing up for? It's going to be stormy and it's going to be rocky. And and, and being able to start with such a foundation like that, it was yeah. critical for us because it's, it's certainly not roses and rainbows. And it's yeah. certainly not roses and rainbows when you get a historic great recession that I don't even know you know, I'm not an economist, but whatever, 28, 29 months into the freight recession or decline, like Too rough. that's yeah. historically long. Um, yeah. And people are still like, it, it's no end in sight. So like, you, right. you better be built, you better be built for a certain thing. And I feel like hopefully between myself and the people that we have here, we are built that way. And yeah, I think the future, I, I the one thing I'd contend, I don't think live load ever goes away, right? I don't think there's yeah. the infrastructure. Yeah. I don't think there's the facility infrastructure. Um, yeah. Good points. around especially some of these these really dense spots like there's people yeah. we talked to today where i mean they'll love all the advantages of what we can do and the service and this and that but they'll be like but i can't do drops because i i don't have the space or i don't have the yard or this so like we like to work with you bring yeah. them in but and there's so much of that right and i there's i can't cite i can't i don't know the difference between live load and drops as far as market segmentation on the size piece yeah. Yeah. what you said makes sense um, but yeah, I don't think that's going away because I think facilities and, and efficiencies and operational efficiencies aren't built for trailer pools and you'd have to have so many people change. So, and also let's talk about like different segments, um, you know, flatbed. Well, that's probably always going to get live. Like you're not going to have too many preload flatbeds, right? Maybe so. Yeah. Refrigerated. I was on right. a call like, oh, who wants to have trailer pools on the front end, the liability, maintaining the people <laughs> on the back end you want to drop. Okay. And I've had accounts like that and work, but like, that's a, like the costing, the maintenance, the liability, like people just want a live, live reefer all day long. Let's be honest. Yeah. Like that yeah. one's not changing. So for all those reasons, I think live lives here to stay. 
but I do feel like what we're building, I do feel like from an industry perspective and I, hey, I'll give you feedback from like our customers, like they kind of like having an independent pure play that can compete with, um, a large group, you know, a small group of large participants mm -hmm. that honestly what ends up happening, right? So you get these mergers and then more mergers and more mergers. So you want to talk about, uh, uh, you know, a uh, portfolio diversity. If you yeah. and me flip scripts and now, hey, we're both wearing procurement leader hats. Well, I used to have one company. Well, then I had I had two companies. Now I have two companies under one umbrella. Oh, I used to have two companies. And then we have three. I used to have three. And you see what I'm saying? It starts to consolidate and they're like, yes. I'm not sure I love that from a procurement leverage play. Right. What are my other options? Right. Right. And, and hey, maybe you don't need other options when it's a 29 month historical low route and you're like you're the greatest procurement professional on planet Earth. But let's get back into an inflationary time and yes. let's test that theory. And I think you've yeah. got a lot of like very creative, interesting, um, dynamic, you know, folks that work at shippers that are like, I can see the future and I want to have some other opportunities uh, to test and keep honest this small group of large participants that continues to consolidate. I don't love that for me and my company. Right. Well said, well said. What do you, what's like, is there any, and again, a, a recession, freight recession, right? You know, that's certainly been some, some pretty significant headwinds for quite a while. Do you, do you feel right now that the messaging around the, the power only and the trailer pools are just less out of the spotlight because a lot of companies are like, Hey, Whatever we'll just we just need freight we just carriers we're just trying to find you know find anything on the dock. It's you find some of that right now. It's a model you can limp into, man. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's it's highly levered. It's really expensive. It's uh, not for the faint of heart. Right. Uh, on on and, and you probably t when you go into your engagements and your your sales team, etc. Are do you guys are you looking for certain certain conversations that surface, whether you, uh, someone, uh, an organization is like, Hey, we're, we buy into this vision. Absolutely. Uh, we may not be able to execute today or even six, 12 months, but we, we want to, we want to get on this, this, this train because we feel that there's something there. Yeah. Um, we call it the starter pack. The starter pack. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And after then we, we used, after named. Yeah. Yeah. We, it's the starter pack. Right. And then like, we've got this deal where like we're now we're in junior seasons with people. Right. And then the conversation changes, but let's not get it twisted. Chris, when you come in, in this market, new entrant, unproven people are always like, Oh, you just, you, ooh, I think I walk in and tell you what I want to do. You tell me, right. Hey, Chris, here's what works best for me. That conversation never yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. Never. Like if that conversation ever happens, I'll call you. Right. But the conversation usually is like, here's where my problem point is. And so we start in some pretty challenging spots to earn that credibility where I've been really proud. You asked about pride in the team. Mm -hmm. Like when we start with customers, they really enjoy working with my team. Yeah. They really yeah. enjoy our, you know, beyond the equipment, they enjoy right. the connection. They enjoy the, what I call the gaff factor, right? Mm -hmm. The giver, right? Yeah. They enjoy the gaff factor. They enjoy the personalities. They enjoy the execution. And so we have been wildly successful about retention even yeah. in a falling market, because people not only give us a shot, want to give us more shots, but our retention rate's really high because of all the other things we bring to the table. And that I'm super proud of as well. I think that's got to speak volume, Shannon, to you, to Don, to the, the entire team, because I think that's, it goes back. I mean, we hear relationships and it's a people, but it is true, right? I'm, 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 I'm right there somewhere between cutting and bleeding edge tech, probably where I work in the last couple, even in my prior life. So some tough, you know, Conceptually, I think people are starting to understand uh, this idea of, you know, what, what I'm bringing to the table, my company. Um, but I do think that it goes back to like, I've, I've worked at so many cool companies that either have a great product, but the culture is weak. And the team, the leadership team is not quite there and not inspiring enough to keep the rest of the troops on board. Right. So I think it goes back. I was just talking to our uh, Peter, uh, who you've met. Right. And we were just talking about it. it all goes back to team. Right. If you have that foundational leadership team that radiates positive energy is is real in the sense that it's not going to be easy. So, you know, let, let it like you said earlier, know what you're signing up for. It's going to be a, a right. true roller coaster. But I, I, I just always want to call that out, because I think if I had to really distill everything down, whether you have the greatest product out there, no matter what, if you don't have that that team that's kind of one team, one vision, one mission, we're going to do it together. Like I said earlier, having a meritocracy mindset of people that bring great ideas to the table. Um, I, I just don't think I've never seen a company really truly successful, at least in my experience, that doesn't have some element of 
of creating that team and that culture uh, and that sense of, you know, being, they want to be a part of it despite all the challenges. So yeah, uh, gr glad you called that out. Glad yeah, you called that out. A, it's a big deal. That's I think where I've always built, I mean, since I was a kid, right. I've just loved the sports, like, like being the point guard. Don't Better, the yeah. Score. yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't care if I score three points or eight points, but truly just want to win. Yeah. Um, and I think that, it's, it's odd because I used to have a lot of things that people wanted and I traded it in for that. And so I'm still not driven really by the thing that most people want, which I think mm -hmm. makes it unique and powerful because you can, you can really act in a way that is truly selfless because you really aren't concerned with your own personal self gain. And I think right. a lot of people struggle with That's that. leadership, right? Leaders yeah. eat last. You gotta, you, it's easy to read words on a wall and have a manual of our core values. But yeah. man, I tell you, when you're living and breathing and acting those things, man, I, it, it goes a long way, especially when I see the younger generations that grew up in a different time than we did and, and value things differently than perhaps we did. Uh, just the way, just the generation that they, they're part of. Um, well, Shane, I've talking, I, we've had a lot of time, man. I know we're both, uh, yeah. we probably have other things on the calendar. What can we look forward to going into the rest of this year and, and into next probably? And I know so much predicated on the, the, the industry, right? And the market, yeah. but what can we look forward to from freight bond? It doesn't have to be anything, like I said, like maybe it's, maybe it's more, uh, you know, marketing and, and getting your brand out yeah. there more. Maybe it's, maybe it's a solution or some ideas you guys are putting together, but how can, you know, how can I help evangelize? If I'm, if I'm with someone like, if you heard of freight Vana, yeah. you know, Shannon, I'm going to say, of course, what's yeah. the one thing you'd want me to kind of get them excited to kind of take that next step to reach out to you? Yeah, if you haven't heard of us, we just locked a deal down with Elon, actually, and the SpaceX program, and we're going to put the first 53-foot drive-in into space. So, oh, is this? Are you serious? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, you got a good poker face, man. I was sitting there like, yep. Elon's been on a bit of a ride lately, and I'm like, this would just be icing on the cake, yeah. man. So, uh, we, why don't we okay. say that? I'm going to have a drink in me and say that. They're working with Elon. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, look, first drive in in space. Dude, that's not an easy feat, you know, so we're that's proud our, of That's it. our North Star. Of, that's of, our North 53 Star. feet top trailer on the moon. Yeah, yeah. You, you thought the trailers were special before. <laughs> Wait till you see this shit. Uh, uh, no, that, none of that's true. Um, <laughs> not yet. Uh, not yet. Don't don't lose out, man. <laughs> yeah, it's on the cutting. It's on the cu cutting room table. So, yeah. Um, yeah. No, man, we're just going to grow. Like, we, we've got ambitions here for growth this year. Um We've beat our forecast the first two months of the year, despite some of the awesome. challenges. Um, obviously, a conservative forecast, like many have probably put I think together. That's the smart way to go in forecasting. Time. Yeah, I don't know anybody with a bullish forecast that I've talked to in any sector. That sounds so, like a, that sounds risky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're beating it, right? And we've got a good team, and we're motivated on that. And we've got really cool partners on both the carrier and the side. So for us, it's just it's just expansion. It's learning. It's tech. It's uh, it's all those things as we grow in and then ideally, Hey, hopefully a little bit of a, a bump in the market. Like we're, we're not built for, I always, I always tell folks, we're not, we're not built for the outhouse. We're not, we're not trying to take you to the penthouse really could use some sort of an equilibrium market yeah. um, with, with what we're doing. And so obviously pretty hopeful that we'll be in a really good position when that hits and we have proven out some of our model and, and have opportunities with some of our really good customers when even more opportunities present themselves. So that, that's awesome. our, that's our future, man. And then I like it. Doing it right. So yeah, got to have a little fun. That's my last thing. My LinkedIn about me is always aim to have a little fun along the way. Yeah. Cause if you're not having a little fun, then you know, well, I, what's the that? point, what's the point. Right. Yeah, so uh, way, awesome. Cool. Well, are you going to be out on the road anytime soon, man? As far well, as like, I went on a five of seven oh, week tour. Coming down, yeah. I, I got to stay home last week and I felt like a kid in a candy store, like sleeping in my yeah. bed. And so you did the best. It's the I best. Just, I just, I, I, hey, once again, as you get older, I, I am not built for the, I got little kids, man. I, yep. I absolutely miss my kiddos. I, I'm in soccer and my kids playing basketball. And so, uh, love that aspect of my life. And it's, 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 can't do that from the road. So, uh, enjoying, Amen. enjoying yeah. that. I don't have anything for a couple months. So I'm, I'm, and it's really tough here in Phoenix. So I'm going to try to gut it out, you know, um, <laughs> No dust on the golf clubs. That's still, no, that's still prevalent. And get the hit ball. You know, so not to throw shade at all my uh, east of the Mississippi folks, but no, it's it's good. Life's good. And so just good. trying to good, keep it man. all balanced, my brother. Awesome. Well, Shannon, hey, thanks, man. It's Like I said, I hope we continue more of these in the future and preferably face-to-face yeah. -face again. So uh, all I ask is I'm going to be out. You know, you're coming off one. I'm kind of getting back in the, the ebbs and flows of some travel, but uh, it's part of the game, right? But um, 
good catching up, man. I think I learned as much as I learned from you in Manifest. I think this is just more of yeah. making me a, a big fan of Shane and Breen, and that'll continue. Uh, so uh, you got my vote of confidence, you and Free Ivana. Love, love what you guys are doing. And I think uh, so many opportunities, man. We've talked about some today, and I, I, it's great to see people um, like yourself that kind of have – the realist in terms of what's possible and the absorption rate of our industry, but they also see like, if we're not moving the need a little bit and testing some of this out and it takes somebody to do it, then we're always going to be viewed as this lagging industry. And I think, again, we're the backbone of commerce, man. We're every, everything, right. It comes, it has yeah. to move on a trailer at some point. So right. uh, the opportunity size is massive. Uh, and I will continue, like I said, to support you guys in any way I can. And um, yeah, man, looking forward to catching up whenever, Brother, I was, I was, permit, like, as they say. Every talk we've had, and, and like I said, as I, I intro, no gaslighting. You you guys show up the right way. Your team's great. What you guys are trying to accomplish, and I think that's the cool part. We talked about the industry and meeting people, yeah. and like those relationships, being able to. And I think there's there's like a gravitational deal where certain people gravitate because of that. Yeah, energy I agree. Thought. And like as I've grown, like I have this rolodex of folks that I just lean on heavily, and we do see each other and we call each other and we ask questions yeah. and we gain understanding. And like, I think when you look, valuable. Back, on, when you look yeah. back on a career, like that's some of the most special stuff. Like no one's going to remember what your PL was in right. February of the year, 2024. Like no one cares. Right. But no different than your earlier reference in college. Right. I don't remember all the lectures, but I do remember those great social times or mm -hmm. you know, whatever what, the other aspects of that life. Right. And so yeah. I think it, there's parallels in your professional life as you get older, like you can still maintain that. Right. And so, yeah. Conversations like this, man, again, no scripted, just kind of two guys have been around, seen it all as, as much as we have so far. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, that's, that's what makes it all worthwhile to me, man. So again, Shannon, uh, appreciate you making some time today, man. Look forward Absolutely, to seeing you. Again, we'll see you again. Hit me up when you're in Phoenix. I'll hit you up if I get out that way. Mm -hmm.